Hello, digital photography students. Today we are going to do a, a lesson called uh, Image Behind Text. This is a lesson I found on YouTube and I've adapted. So first of all, um, you're going to open your Canvas class here. I have my digital photography class and under assignments, you will find the image text exercise. You are going to download this picture of the front of our school. All right, you are going to download it and it's going to go into your downloads folder. And then you're going to open Photopia, P-H-O-T-O-P-E-A.com. And you are going to go file open. Remember, that's how we open all our files is file open. And you are going to go look in your downloads folder for NSHS front. Okay, once the image is open, you are going to come down here and create a new layer. Okay, it's going to be right here and you were gonna turn this layer black. Now remember in Photopia, the paint bucket tool hides behind the gradient tool. So you can either get to it by clicking on the little triangle or you can um, just hit the G key. And if you look in the top left-hand corner of my screen here, as I'm hitting the G key, it toggles between the gradient and the photo bucket, um, paint bucket tool. So I'm gonna click, I don't want white, I want black. So I can remember the color picker to change color, you can click on it. Or the default black and white, you can just click on the default black and white button. And I'm gonna spread paint into that layer one. Now my picture of the school is still there. It's just covered up by um, my layer of black. All right, I'm gonna do some text. So I'm gonna click on my text tool. And because we are North Stokes High School, I'm gonna write that in big letters. Now I want you to notice right now at the very top of my screen, my text is currently black. So I can sit here and type text till the, town, the cows come home, but you will never be able to see it because it is black text on a black background. So I'm gonna hit Control A or select all, and I'm gonna change my color, or you can be uh, better than me and change your color before you start typing text. All right, so there it is. Now, one of the reasons I've switched from Pixlr to Photopia is the fonts. I absolutely love the fonts in Photopia, and it gives you a little preview of what they uh, look like. So it sometimes takes a long time to load, and I'm on my Chromebook over a wireless network, so it's being incredibly slow. But I can pick a different font. And over here right now, it's not loaded the font previews, but trust me, it will show up. Um, in the um, filter menu up here, you can click on and off for the type of um, files, the fonts that you want. So I'm just going to click on a random font here. Um, I'm going to pick that one. And over here for the size, I'm going to go all the way up to as, as big as it can, which is 150. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and type NSHS. Now you will notice this is big, but it's not filling the entire screen and I want it to fill the entire screen. Um, so the way to do this in a pixel based photo editing application is you need to rasterize the layer. I know that's a really funny word, rasterize the layer, but trust me, it works. So what I'm doing is I'm changing it from text to pixels. Once I rasterize the layer of text, you'll notice the T goes away. And I, if I wish to take my type tool and change it, I can no longer do that. Going up here in the um, history palette, you'll see how I rasterize the text. So if you do want to go back and change it, you just go back and hit the type tool there and it changes back to type. All right, so I want to make this bigger. So I'm going to go edit, free transform. And you can stretch this out. Normally, I am not a big fan of stretch text. I just feel like that is cringy. But in this situation, it's kind of what we're going for. So we're going to do that. Now, the disadvantage of rasterizing text is, as you can tell, if you look very closely at the edges or you can zoom in and look at the edges, is it does get blurry. That is a disadvantage of rasterizing text. Okay, so doing good so far, guys. Let us, we're going to merge down. It's kind of hard to see my pictures in the way. Right here, merge down. So I'm taking my black layer and my text layer and smashing them together. Um, I'm not making this flat because you still want um, the background image. 
All right, so I'm going to switch my order layer and I'm going to put my background on top. Now, I want to make sure that my the entrance to our school is right here where NSHS is. So I, I kind of changed my opacity to 72%. So I can kind of move that around, make sure I, I like it. Um, I can edit free transform if I want to change the shape. All right, all is good. So I'm going to switch that back to 100%. Ta da! All right, now we are going to kind of move our selections. What in the world are you talking about, Hindi? Let me show you. So you're going to click on the black and white layer that has NSHS. You are going to click on the magic wand tool that hides behind this funny kidney shaped thing called object selection. So you click W for wand. Okay, again, top left hand corner, see how it's scrolling through the tools. Let me hit it again. W, W, W. Okay, so hit the W three times till you get the magic wand tool. Shing. All right, you are going to click on the black. If it's not working, make sure you're in the right layer. See right here, my text NSHS, that layer is, is the one you want to work on. Now you can remember, I retitle my layers. You just double click and you can type to rename the layers, but you don't have to do that for this assignment. My liars, my lights went out. All right. So now you are going to take the selection. You selected everything that's black. And if you're doing something like an E or an O that has a hole in it, you want to make sure you hold shift and your magic wand tool to get in the center of any donut holes. All right. So I'm going to go to my layer where my school is. I'm going to turn on my eyeball I'm going to turn on the eyeball so I can see what I'm doing. Now you're going to hit the E, the eraser tool. Remember the keyboard shortcut for eraser is E. All right. And right now my eraser is 15. That is super duper small. Let's make this eraser tool bigger. Now, if you get a super duper eraser, you are working over wireless and it will, sometimes it will crash your computer or stall it. Um, so give it a minute. If it gets super laggy, don't get frustrated. Remember, you're working on a Chromebook on a web browser, so it's not going to be super speedy, especially if you're working with a big image. All right, so I've erased all of the background, you could say. So I'm almost done. You're doing good. So I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to hit select, deselect. Now, this is, mm, I want to make it look better. I think it needs a shadow, a drop shadow or an inner glow. And I'm still kind of working at this, so I'm going to show you where the selection is. So you can do inner glow, inner shadow, outer glow, but make sure you've deselected all. Now I want you to remember you're on a black background and I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take, I'm going to select the top of my gray toolbar and drag it. So right now there's this strange color and I don't like it. Our school colors are green. And if I picked a dark green, you probably couldn't see it. So you can't see it. So I'm going to go with a bright neon green because, yeah. Now you can kind of see a small outline around the letters. Here's where you're going to play. All right, so you, the spread, you can play with the spread. And you want to find this to your liking. So you're going to use this tog toggle bar and make it bigger. You can add noise if you want more of a faded. Ooh, no, don't do that. That's too big. I do like the noise, though. So you're going to play around with that. I, I, think that's, I think that's super funky. Now, you could argue that's tacky, and I would agree with you, but we're just playing around with this. If you want to select the drop shadow or the inner shadow, uh, feel free to play around with that, and you can always use multiple colors if you wanted to have a neon green or a white or something like that. But for this is an exercise, um, so we are practicing to do the final project called Image Behind Text. So I think we've got this. This looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now I'm going to save the file in two different file formats. The first is I'm going to save it as a PSD file. So in case I want to go back and edit my effects, I can go back and do that. The second thing is I'm going to export this as a JPEG so I can upload this to Canvas. So let's do that now. I'm going to hit File, Save as PSD. 
Uh, now, right now, it's going to save it as NSHS front two. Uh, if I wanted to, I probably should have done this before this. I can double click in that little tab and I can call this image behind. Don't put spaces in your file names. And let me see behind text exercise. And that's probably a, a fairly long title. So maybe I could just say image behind text exercise. Okay. IBT exercise. All right, so I could download that as a PSD file, and then I'm going to hit export as, and I'm going to pick JPG or PNG, because remember, Canvas will only accept JPGs or PNGs, and so will Artsonia, and we are going to upload our final product to Artsonia. Now, look right here. My width is 1,000 pixels, and because that's kind of relatively a small file, I'm not going to bring my quality down that far. I want to keep it about 100%. And then I'm going to hit save and it's going to download this. So this is um, in my downloads folder, which I need to move to my photography folder. And then I'm going to go back to my Canvas assignment and hit the submit button and turn that in. I hope you guys learned how to do image behind text today. Bye.